Hi, my name is Aideen Rajar. I'm a product manager at Facebook, and I'm recording this screencast to give you an overview of our App Insights product. App Insights are an analytics dashboard that helps you measure the value of your Facebook platform integrations. It shows you sources of Facebook traffic, demographic information about your users, and even actions that people are taking inside your app so that you can use that information to optimize your ad spend, your organic user acquisition, and even the user experience that you provide inside your app. So let's get started. The easiest way to get to your insights dashboard is to go to facebook.com forward slash insights. Here you'll see a list of all the applications that you have access to. Note that in order to view the insights dashboard for an app, you have to have an administrator, developer, or insights user permission on the app. So let's click through to my example app to see what the dashboard looks like. So this is the overview tab and landing page of my example apps insights dashboard. It's designed to provide an at-a-glance overview of the key metrics that we're tracking and how those numbers are trending. It defaults to show the most recent four weeks, but you can change that time frame to 90 days, one week, or drag the sliders to choose a time frame of your own choosing. So we're going to dig into a few of the key sections of App Insights, starting with referrals. So referrals are all about the traffic that Facebook is sending to your app, both organic and paid. Notice that we have the time selector UI again at the top. It's available across all the tabs so we're clear about what dates we're looking at. Starting with total referrals, we can see the total number of clicks Facebook is sending to this app. Mobile referrals are just the clicks happening on a mobile device. Referrals from story clicks show us how many clicks we're getting on newsfeed stories generated by this app. And referrals from requests shows how many referrals we're getting from requests sent from the app to users. Note that each of these charts has additional breakdowns available so you can dig further into the data. For example, on total referrals, we can break down the data by client across iOS, web, Android, and mobile web. We can see of the traffic that was sent to the app, what percentage of those users already had the app installed versus those that didn't. And we can see the breakdown between sponsored and organic traffic. Scrolling further down the page, we can see exactly how many installs were generated from the total referrals sent from Facebook. So that's the referral section. Let's move on to login. The login tab shows data about how well your Facebook login integration is working. We can start by looking at new logins across devices. Permissions removal just simply shows when users remove your app's permissions from their Facebook account. We can view daily, weekly, and monthly active users that are using Facebook login inside your app. And we can see the total number of users that have ever accepted your app's request for Facebook permissions. The login dialog section shows us the impressions, accepts, and the accept rate of the Facebook login dialog inside your app broken up by client. Note that you can look at this data for new logins, just the, the initial login permission, but also for additional permissions such as uh, the publish permission, which lets your app publish to the user's newsfeed. New logins from App Center simply shows installs resulting from clicks directly from Facebook's App Center. And finally, one of the key benefits of using Facebook login is that it gives you insights into who the people using your app actually are. In this case, we can see that for this app, the largest percentage of users are male between the ages of 25 and 34. You can also get a geo breakdown to see where users of this app are located around the world. Let's click over to the Stories tab. We covered the Overview tab, the Referrals tab being the traffic that Facebook is sending to your app, the Login tab showing you metrics on your Facebook login integration. The Stories tab is about the stories that your application is publishing to the Facebook newsfeed. So story distribution is the primary metric we're interested in. We can see the number of stories published, the impressions those stories generate, and the click-through rate on those stories. One of the most interesting breakdowns on this chart is action type where you can see the number of stories published via APIs, such as the Photo Upload API and the Stream Publish API, along with your custom open graph stories. The next set of metrics to keep an eye on are positive engagement with stories. This shows us the number of times that your stories got clicks, likes, and comments. And again, we can break this out by action type so that you can see which type of story is generating the most engagement. It's also important to keep an eye on negative engagement to make sure that you're not getting too many spam reports or users blocking your app. If 
Finally, we once again have a demographic breakdown of the, of the users that are publishing stories to Facebook from within your app. This, these demographics naturally look somewhat similar to the login, but could be a little bit different given that it could be a different profile of person that's more likely to share a story than one who simply uses your app. So that's the Stories tab. We're going to move on to App Events now. Uh, app Events are a little bit different from the first four sections that we covered, but they're very powerful and we'll get into why. App Events are designed to help you measure and monitor the performance of your Facebook ad campaigns, to create custom audiences for ad targeting, and to give you demographic insights about groups of users that are taking specific actions inside your app. This is done by sending events from your app to Facebook via the Facebook SDK. To set it up, you need, the, you need version 3.6 or later of the SDK. From there, you add a single line of code for every event that you want to log. There's a set of 14 predefined events that you can use, such as app launch or purchase with a value attached or level complete. Each of those events has custom parameters you can append to it. And if none of the 14 predefined events match what you need, you can also create your own custom events. For information about how to log app events, go to developers.facebook.com and search for app events. Now let's look at what's possible once you're logging events. The following is a list of events that this particular app is logging. App installs, app launches, sessions completed, levels achieved, purchases, and tutorials completed. We can see the count of the events and how they're trending. We can see the weekly active users triggering this event. And for the two events that have a value associated, we can see the total value over the period of time that we're looking at in this chart. From here, we can click through to get further details about the event. We'll start with app launches. App launch is one of the 14 predefined events that we support. It should be logged every time a user opens up your app. On iOS, it also automatically captures the session length, while on Android, you need to log an additional event to capture the session close. So starting at the top, there are a set of filters if you want to look at just a subset of the data. We have a trend line, daily, weekly, and monthly active users, and the average number of events per user. So in this case, the average user opens up this app about five and a half times per month. The demographic profile here is just of the people that logged this specific event. It makes sense for app launch that it would look very much like our overall demographic profile. Uh, but if we were looking at a specific event inside the app, like completing a level, uh, we could see if there are any differences between the people that take that particular action versus the overall demographic profile inside the app. Breakdown tables give us a view of all of the parameters being logged with the event. Uh, we also support custom parameters that are passed through, so you can look at the breakdown of the data based on your custom parameters. Distribution shows us the percentile of users who represent the most activity within the app. So in this case, we can see that 28% of our users represent almost 90% of app launch events. You can drag this line back and forth to adjust that percentage, and then click this button to target with ads to create a custom audience that can do one of two things. You can create a custom audience of just the high value users inside your app to target them with re-engagement ads, or you can create a lookalike audience to find more people across Facebook that look really similar to the people that represent the most value inside your app. Finally, the retention chart shows us the percentage of users who log this event each day after installation based on the day of installing. So on August 20th, 100% of the people that opened the app obviously opened the app, but then we can see over time what the drop-off is for that particular date versus other dates to see if something changed inside the app that might have affected our, our user retention. There's one last feature that I'd like to review. Uh, to do that, we'll switch over to see the purchase events being logged for this app. For the purchase event, you can see that we have the trend lines once again, but not only can we view the data by event count, but also by event value, since value is a parameter that's passed through on the purchase event. Make sure and specify the currency on this as well. So the last thing I'd like to review is a feature that we launched relatively recently called Label Cohort. The default behavior of label cohorts is to pass through the acquisition source of an installation. So in this case, we can see that about 43% of users who made a purchase inside the app installed the app organically as far as Facebook knows. But you can also see users who installed the app as a result of a specific ad campaign. You can see not just the, the count of people from that campaign that made a purchase, but also the value of those purchases. And this label is persistent so that you can monitor the value of that ad campaign over time and understand your return on ad spend. 
Label Cohorts also allows you to use the Graph API to change the label so that you can create arbitrary groups of people uh, to understand the value that just that cohort de delivers. For example, you could create a cohort of people that complete a particular level inside your app or complete a tutorial and see if they're more likely to make a purchase than everyone else inside your app. So that's an overview of App Insights on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Make sure to go to developers.facebook.com for more information.